Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to Miles Edgeworth, Attorney at Law. Ace Attorney. I messed that up. <laughs> Anyhow, we're now just beginning the first day in court in the final case of the entire trilogy. And it still feels surreal to say that we're in the final case of the entire trilogy. So things aren't looking too good for us. Our client, Iris... Her fingerprints were all over the murder weapon. There's an eyewitness saying that she did it. And our biggest lead that could have turned into something good, the blackmail letter, turned out to be just a bogus dead end with just Larry Butts shenanigans involving that. The less said about that, the better. So, here in court, we really don't really have anything to work with. We're just going to have to pick apart the defendant's testimony bit by bit, and that's going to be Bikini. Now, uh, we do have the Canadian judge here because Miles can't do to be recognized as Miles Edgeworth. And most surprisingly, apparently the prosecutor won't be Godot? Yeah, Edgeworth pulled some, some strings, and the prosecutor that Miles would be going up against is someone that Miles chose, apparently. So I'm very interested to see how this is all going to go down. Right. Court is now in session for the trial of Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple. The defense is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> right facing Miles Edgeworth, oh, with an attorney's badge on his, his jacket. Label? I want to say label. I don't know what a label is, but that thing that it's on it looks like a label. Is it just me, or... Did Edgeworth always have a black coat on underneath his red jacket? I sincerely forget if he did. It's been so long since we've seen him, man! The defense does indeed appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. Indeed. I'm not sure I like such a blatant waste of this court's time. An empty prosecutor's chair can only mean that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. It would seem this case is already over before it had a chance to begin. Really? I am ready to announce my verdict at this time. This court finds the defendant. Objection! <laughs> oh yes! Oh, I fucks with this. I fucks with this. Oh! Oh, she's back. The whippy girl's back. Oh god, what voice did I even give her? Oh, that's right. Mm. The prosecution stands ready. And you are? Francisca Von Karma, prosecuting prodigy. Von Karma, you say? Von Karma, indeed. Oh! Now, I was looking forward to Edgeworth interacting with Godot. But Franziska motherfucking Von Karma. Ooh! Yes! Ah, <laughs> oh, Von Karma, you spent a long time away. Did a lot of soul searching. Show me who you've become. Perchance you you wouldn't be of any relation to the legendary prosecutor Manfred von Karma. Legends are a thing of the past. I'm a von Karma. That is all. Upon a special request, I flew in today for the purposes of prosecuting this case. Yes. You, you did? Then you must be quite a big shot, eh? 
By the way, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? I'm almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before. Or am I just imagining things? You look very much like a prosecutor I met once. I believe you are imagining things, Your Honor. Miss Von Karma, do you have anything to say? There is no such weakling as this man among those of the prosecutor's office. Uh, she's helping out in her own special Von karma -y way. There, there isn't, but, but I'm sure I... Ack! I told you, there is no such weakling. Well, what is that? A whip? I'm not sure I care for such a thing in my courtroom. Where was this line of dialogue in the second game? Where was it? I was waiting for the entire game for it to show up. B Bailiff, remove that whip at... Hold it! I have no objection to the whip. But you don't? The prosecution can will the whip or drink 17 cups of coffee. But there is still only one truth. That is what I stand here to prove today. This promises to be interesting, Miles Edgeworth. I had expected to face Phoenix Wright here today. But looking at you now, maybe this is what I have been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush, your, to crush you slip through my fingers. I see you brought your flair for the hist histrionic. What is histrionic? Stop using big words. Allow me to add to the things I'm not sure about. People acting bizarrely in my court. Ah! The stage is set. Now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Very well. Miss Von Karma, please give an outline of this case. With as little whipping as possible. The murder victim is the famed picture book author, Miss Elise Dunin. Her body was found in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard. Well... Man, the grip on that statue seems so tight. How did the blade get out of it in the first place? Although there is a notable lack of snow piled up on the top of the hand. She had been stabbed through the torso by a ceremonial sword from a golden statue. The sword in this picture is a weapon in question, correct? Very well. The court accepts this photo of the crime scene. There is no mistake. This was the doing of Sister Iris. After all, there is a witness to her crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the stand. And so it begins. My first and last trial as a defense attorney. <laughs> Please get her, a, like, a milk crate to stand on. Oh, man. They did this joke way back in the first game for the, the, the stupid bratty kid who wore green and orange and was like... Yeah, I like the trading cards or whatever. Uh, that was funny too. Um. Witness, state your name and occupation. Please. My god! Please? Franziska said please? Wow, she has changed. Uh, hold on there. I'm not sure about being not sure if I care for this at all. <laughs> Witness, please stand up nice and straight. If I recall correctly, there are a few milk crate. What did I just say? I said get her a milk crate to stand on. Okay, then again, that's like the default go-to thing to stand on to make yourself taller, right? Even though I've never actually seen a milk crate. 
uh, like the sort of like blue plasticky things with like a, a, a wire mesh fence sort of pattern on them. Um, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for our back pain plagued witness. Bailiff, fetch a crate for this poor lady, please. Once again, your name and occupation, please. A little old me. Well, I'm the head nun at Hazakura Temple on Eagle Mountain. My name is Bikini. You got it? Bikini. Nice to meet everyone. But you don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. Wah! The courtroom is in the Garden of Holy Judgment. Oh, the courtroom is the Garden of Holy Judgment. Those with lechery in their hearts should leave the sanctuary at once. Didn't Edgeworth just say that he's okay with whips? You, you want me to leave? No need to get your bikinis in a twist. Let me tell you, I'm, just, I'm a sight to behold in summer. <laughs> in any case... Witness, I hear that you saw the crime take place on the night in question. That's right. I can still hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way dear little Iris could do anything like that. Let us hear what you have to say, then. First, tell us about your own movements that night, eh? Come on. Come on, game. Rain it in. That night, I was helping an acolyte with her training in the inner temple. But, well, as you can see, my back likes to act up violently. So I left Iris to help the acolyte and returned to Hasakura Temple. There's no bath at the inner temple, you see, and I needed a long, hot soak. It was after I had finished, just as I was heading back. That's when I saw it! Hmm... So it was simply coincidence that you found yourself returning to Hazakura Temple. Yes, you could say that. If my back hadn't been in so much pain, I would have stayed at the Inner Temple. That sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There is only one problem with this testimony that I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle, now are you, Miles Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth. Please begin your cross-examination. Hmm. Let's see. Let's take this bit by bit before pressing. That night I was helping an acolyte with her training in the inner temple. That's correct. Well, I guess only Maya could testify to that. But she's not here. As you can see, my back likes to act up violently. So I left Iris to help the Acolyte and return to Hazakura Temple. Yeah, Bikini's just suddenly spreading. Oh yes, Iris, Iris was there. This was probably what uh, Francisco's talking about. Bikini left Iris there, but somehow saw Iris at the temple. And if there's only one path to the temple, how did Iris get ahead of Bikini? Yeah. There's no bath of the temple, you see, and I needed a long hot snow soak. Nothing to contradict there. It was after I finished, just as I was heading back, that's when I saw it. Definitely need to press that. Right. Hold it! What is this inner temple? Well, see, conversing with the spirits is what we train people to do, right? We'll be the ones asking you the questions, ma madam. In order to do that, a place strong in spiritual power is required. There's a small temple across Dusky Bridge called the Inner Temple. Acolytes must spend an entire night there to undergo intense training. And how exactly do you help with this process? It is quite exciting. No, exacting. It can't be performed without a nun supervising. Like a tutor, watching to make sure a spoiled child studies. A tutor with a whip, in your case. If that is the case, then why did you return to Hazakura Temple, where the murder took place? 
Well, as you can see, my back likes to act up. Violently. Hold it! Violently? That's right. It's no laughing matter, especially in winter. I can't hold anything heavier than a knife and fork during the cold months. Just being alive is like strict training. <laughs> On the night of the murder, was this fabulous back of yours hurting again? That's right, raging like a bull in a pig pen. I almost fainted once or twice. I just knew that unless I warmed it up, it was going to finally finish me off. So I left Iris to help the acolyte and returned to Hazakura Temple. You left Iris to help? With what? What do you think? Acolyte's training, of course. It was just past 10 p.m., so we were starting to enter into the training exercises proper. Wasn't it your place to remain with the disciple? Well, the job is simply to watch over the acolyte so that they don't pass away. Just to confirm this point again, that night, you met Iris in the inner temple, correct? Yes, yes, she's a gentle, honest girl. She's never once failed to follow my directions. <laughs> Edgeworth knows, definitely. So it's like, Bikini, we have evidence saying that Iris stayed in her room the entire time, right? Yeah, Iris' testimony. Rain lights out Bell at 10 p.m. and was then in her room until the murder was discovered. Yeah, we can just point out the, the letter right here, I think. Uh, but I want to press everything just to see all the dialogue. I kind of immediately regret asking about Bikini's bathing habits. Um, so you return to the Hazakura Temple in order to take a bath. My back is to blame for everything. It's a do-or-be-done-in kind of world, after all. I'm sure that was meant to be do-or-die world. How long were you in the bath for, if you don't mind me asking? My, 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 what a filthy little rogue you are. I know what's on your mind. I have many regrets. Eh? I bet your next question is going to be, where exactly did you wash? Ah, this is why you have to watch the young ones. What are you going on about? Ah! Pathetic, Miles Edgeworth. The lowest of the low. Is there some sort of kick-me sign stuck to the defense's bench? <laughs> if the camera just panned down a little. Anyway, I couldn't afford to be away from my post for too long, you understand, so... It was after I had finished, just as I was heading back. That's when I saw it. Hold it! The crime took place in the courtyard, correct? When you go from my room to the main hall, you have to take a winding hallway from which you can see the courtyard. That's right. In other words, it was pure coincidence that the witness saw the crime taking place before her eyes. There is no complicated setup in this case. Hmm. That certainly seems to be true. There is indeed only one problem with this testimony. If I can clearly point out what it is, then I can begin to quantify just how good this witness's memory and observation skills are. Right. I left Iris to help the Acolyte and returned to Hazakura Temple. Um, let's see. Yeah, I Iris' testimony says that she stayed in her room the entire time. Witnesses have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. The defendant's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory, after all. Well, well, well. Don't worry. I'm more than up to the task. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Hazakura Temple. In that case, Miss Honcho, I'd like you to explain something for me. 
Just the discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after bringing the lights out, Belle, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means, she did not go to the inner temple at all. No. She said that? A defendant or a witness? Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. But that is completely illogical. The murder was committed in the courtyard of Hazakura Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make for a much better alibi. But that is odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. <laughs> she does indeed have honest eyes. Wah! All people lie. That is my belief. Why am I the only one being whipped in here? Anyway, neither the witness nor the defendant have any reason to lie. Which means... We must call your memory into question. Dear, dear, dear. You're older than me and yet you want to play that game, do you? Uh, well... That isn't exactly what I... My memory is perfect. Crystal clear. Especially in winter. Then, I suppose it's too early to end this cross-examination, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you are going to question the memory of this witness, you will need to show me a more decisive piece of evidence. Understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that alone would do the trick. Then please add your comments about a boot iris to the testimony. And let us return to the cross-examination. Alright. Okay. Iris came to the inner temple. She was dressed exactly as she had been at dinner. No, she gave her hood to Phoenix. Mm mm. I like it when these are so obvious. <laughs> Hold it. Are you sure that you're not making a mistake? You, young man, need to get your estimation of me up from the floor. Ugh. Iris always wears the same clothes. The smallest thing out of place would have stood out like a sore thumb to me. <laughs> Keep digging that grave, Bikini. You're making a mistake, thinking I made a mistake. An excellent finish there, witness. Still, I have to wonder... <laughs> Iris's hood received before the lights out bell the night of the crime. Objection! Witness, let's get one thing straight. The defendant whom you claim to have met, she was wearing this demon warding hood, correct? Of course. That is a very important piece of clothing, I'll have you know. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold it right there. Why do you have that? That's the question of the day, now isn't it, Miss Von Karma? I'll have you know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night. Before the lights out bell was run. What? Oh my god. I just... No. But maybe... Okay, I know Phoenix isn't well enough to be out of the hospital today. But what if we call in Phoenix to testify? That would be rad as hell, dude. That would be so goddamn rad. But I want it. I want it now. <laughs> anyway, you know where I'm going with this, don't you? If the witness had seen the defendant as she claims then the iris she saw would have been missing this very hood. Well, well, well. It's not a bad feeling at all, exposing contradictions like this. Now I understand that happy look on Wright's face every time he does it. <laughs> Walk a mile. Walk a miles in his shoes! Ooh! Oh, I'm... I, okay, I know what I'm naming this video now. 
<laughs> Walk a miles in his shoes. <laughs> oh, I am too pleased at that pun. <laughs> uh. Sister, this hood, you have spare ones around the temple, don't you? Spares? Well, I do tend to make too many of them. I see. A stockpile. A surplus of hoods, eh? Each nun is only given one hood. This should be the only hood that Iris owned. Hmm. Then this is quite strange. If there was a surplus of hoods, then she could have worn one of those. There is no contradiction here. Hmm. I'm sorry to break this to you, Miss Von Karma, but you won't get away that easily. Discrepancies such as this will sow the seeds in any human heart. The seeds of doubt. Witness, while I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt, you must give every detail with precision. Uh, I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath on your way back to the inner temple. The seeds of doubt are sprouting in the judge's heart. You just need a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. I'm not sure I would use the word stimulation when describing a plant growing. I finished my bath around 11, and I thought I should return to the inner temple. Hold up. Hold up. Around 11? Hey! Hey! Hold up. That's around the time the lightning ended. And... Well, the death happened between 10 and 11, so... Uh, it does fit, kinda. So let's keep an eye out if she saw anything about the body falling or whatever. And as I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look and... Iris was... Oh, Mystic Elise! And with that sword of all things... Mystic Elise was staying in the corner room which faces out under the courtyard. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of the window. That's what I thought, but it's not what Edgeworth thought the other day. Hmm. You saw a truly terrible sight, didn't you? If I was in your place, then it would be much like Miss Von Karma whipping Mr. Edgeworth in, t in two in court. And me seeing it all from this very chair. Or, well, something like that. This judge. His imagination is about as vivid and creative as Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, I was gonna say. I would like the fool. I would look the fool if I commit commented on such foolishness. Hey, she said it, boys! She said the thing! Anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. Calling everyone by their full name. Can't you do something about that habit of yours? <laughs> well, I mean, she does call Bikini sister. I finished my bath around 11, and I thought I should return to the inner temple. Hold it! How far is it from your room to the inner temple? Uh, let me think a moment. About 20 minutes on these stumps of mine. Hmm. Hmm, okay. Okay, hold on. So, let's look at the map. So, from the ha Inner Temple to the Hazakura Temple, that's a 20-minute walk. Emphasis on walk, as in opposed to a snowmobile ride. So, Bikini left the temple, the Inner Temple, at 10, took a bath, and then near 11, saw the murder in the courtyard. So that is 
unfortunately ample time for quote unquote Iris to make it back from uh, the inner temple and do the murder. Hmm. Let me see. It's about 15 minutes to Dusky Bridge from Hazakura Temple. Ah. The inner temple is just beyond the bridge. Still, you never made it back there that night, did you? That's right. I was heading oh, I was heading along the walkway toward the main hall. And as I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard. I took a look and Hold it! You say you heard a noise. Thump, just like that. It could only be the sound of the victim falling. My thoughts exactly, actually. It's very quiet in the temple, you know. You can even hear the snow falling from the branches. Thump. Just like that. Oh, well. Hmm. But then, couldn't this noise you heard have been snow falling to the ground? I never thought of that. <laughs> the next one to laugh gets a whipping. Well, whatever the source of the sound, I looked over at the courtyard and... Iris was, oh, Mr. Galise, and with that sword of all things. This is the second time that the witness has testified to seeing the defendant. But, some doubt remains in these claims. Hey, but just what does that mean? Just because you're a good-looking young man doesn't give you the right to... The murderer who stabbed the victim with the sword. Sister Bikini, try to recall exactly who it was you saw, as clearly as you can. Like, yeah, we're talking faces here. If you just saw the person in the robes, in the hood, it could be anyone. Hmm, well, you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. Oh, now that you mention it, there was something awfully strange about her. Something that has been bugging me all this time. Please, don't keep us in suspense. Her hood. Her hood. That's right. It's coming back to me. Iris, she wasn't wearing her hood. I thought something was out of place, but it all makes sense now, doesn't it? After all, she'd given that hood away to someone, right? Urk. Ha. You've dug your own grave, Miles Edgeworth. What do you say, Mr. Edgeworth? Is this testimony important? Oh... Well, maybe we could play it as Iris would be deathly afraid of going outside without her hood of protection. Hmm. We could also say that... If Bikini saw Iris with the hood at the inner temple, and then without the hood at the Hazakura temple, we could pursue the line of questioning of what happened to her hood in that time frame. Let's see. Hmm. No. does have her hood on in this photo. Um. Yeah. Huh. 
I mean, of course it's important, but the question is, is this important for the defense's case? Uh... Jeez, okay. Like, I'm assuming that if I say it is important, I'll be asked to, asked to immediate, immediately show why it's important. Maybe we could say about how Bikini just said that Iris has never ever taken her hood off at, or something. How it's so important to her. Hmm. I'm kind of stumped. <laughs> Remember when these questions were easy like five minutes ago? Uh, hmm. If I say it's not important, they're probably just going to scold me for trying to skirt around this obviously bad development for my case. I want to say it's important just because it is obviously important, but I don't know what to say afterward. That is a problem. I guess we can try it. This may initially appear to put me at a disadvantage, but I can't see any other leads at the moment. Your Honor, I would like these new statements to be added to the testimony. Okay, thank God. Heh. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth, if you want to hang yourself, you need only ask. I'll gladly lend you my whip. Witness, add that statement to your testimony. No problem. Alright, now that you mentioned it, Iris didn't have her hood on. There's still more stuff you can press, too. Let's do all that first. Hold it. You are sure about that? Yes. After all, we always wear the same clothes. Uh, I don't mean because we're poor, you understand. It's our style. Yes, that's it. There's absolutely no need to explain yourself. Anyway, she looked different from normal, so that really stuck out. Like me, holding a whippet puppy instead of my whip. At least then it might... Why did I go for the judge's voice? At least then it might bite you and not someone else. Iris didn't have her hood on. I'm sure of it. Very well. Now, please tell us about the victim, eh? Mr. Elise was staying in the corner room, which faces out onto the courtyard. The room the victim was staying in overlooked the courtyard, correct? Which means the victim's room was on the second floor. No, no. Hazakur Temple is a single-story building, but the mountain itself slopes downward, which elevates the main gate side of the temple and the guest rooms in the back. It's about the height of a two-story building. I see. And the victim was staying in one of these elevated rooms, correct? Yes. I should know. I'm the one who carried her things to her room, after all. The stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of the window. Hold it! What makes you so sure of all of this? It's just like I told you earlier. I heard a noise coming from the courtyard. Okay. Thump. Just like that. You're one smart sister, I'll give you that. The autopsy report states that the victim's body was covered in bruises, indicating a fall from around 10 feet in height. Hmm. It appears that the witness was not mistaken then. Yep, yep. I'm more than just a pretty face, especially in winter. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Hazakura Temple. Two of them working there. What's wrong, Miles Edgeworth? 
No snappy comeback remark. Doesn't feel like she is lying. This is very powerful testimony, too. She claims to have seen the incident in which the defendant stabbed the victim. There are only two things I can believe in right now. My client, Iris, and my own abilities as a defense attorney. Right, so... I finished my bathroom at 11, but we should return to the temple. No contradicting that. No contradicting that with evidence. No contradicting this. Yet. Iris didn't have her hood on. Can I prove that wrong? Okay, what about the st stabbing after the pushing? Um? The note. Maybe I bring up the blackmail letter saying that no, Iris couldn't have been there, she would have been at the Heavenly Hall, but we know she wasn't. We're here to bring up the truth, dang it. I should note that it takes 15 minutes to get from Dusky Bridge to Hazakura Temple, and vice versa. And... The... The flame started precisely 15 minutes until 11. So, hmm... Uh... Why would this be relevant? Yeah, Iris is wearing her hood here. Nothing about the present day. Uh... Elise has her own hood. Um, do we use the testimony again? Maybe we say, if Iris gave away her hood, why wouldn't she go get one of the many backups? Oh. Autopsy report. Loss of blood from stab in the back. Body fell 10 feet after death. And look, Bikini saying, the stabbing I saw must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. This contradicts the evidence. So I think the hood line of questioning right now is a big red herring. Let's try this. Yeah, hey, okay. So it wasn't important after all. Huh. Impressive logic. That's what I'd like to say, anyway. Oh, please do. My brain is something else, especially in winter. However, I think you are overlooking one thing. Miss Von Karma, would you be so kind as to take another look at the autopsy report? The autopsy report. The victim did fall from a height of ten feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. Ah. Uh, that's right. It says after death right here. The scene the witness claims to have seen is contradictory. If the defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard... How did the victim then go on to take a ten-foot fall? Ah! Uh, order, order! The victim was killed and then fell. If that is the case, then the victim must have been killed in her room. Don't you agree? Th that is the logical conclusion. Yes, that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her own room. And she was then thrown out of her window down into the courtyard below. Objection! Were there any of any signs of a struggle in Miss Dunin's room? 
she was stabbed with a sword. That would leave a blood stain, wouldn't you agree? Well, Miss Von Karma, was there any blood? No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. Your whip has just caused traces of blood to be found in my glorious playoff beard. Playoff beard? However, if there was no blood in the room... Ah! I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this. As I'm sure your honor is well aware of when a stab wound produces the most blood. When it produces the most blood? Very little blood is actually lost at the moment of a blade's insertion. If you want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body, that would be when the blade is removed. Indeed, with the weapon still in place, it acts like a lid on the wound. That's true. With the weapon still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. A perfectly reasonable line of thinking. We have come to a conclusion then. The victim was thrown out of the window with a sword still in place. This removes all of the contradictions. Order, order, order. I must admit that this is a probable version of events. Yes, but how did the, the would-be killer get into the courtroom too? Did she take the ten-foot fall too? Hmm. I'd expect no less from Francisca von Karma. She locates and takes control of every vital point. Humph. It seems that we need a clearer testimony from the witness. Remove all supposition on your part and tell us only the facts, please. Witness, please, remain standing on the crate. Don't go selling me short now. The weight of winter snow has bent me all out of shape. Especially my back and my mood. Sister, please give us your testimony. I will give you a vigorous massage once we are finished here. With the whip? Oh boy, alright, alright. Further details. Okay. When I looked across at the scene, the sword was already in place. Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab, Mr. Gleese. Oh. Maybe Iris or whoever it really is was like, Oh, sh crap, let me help you. Let me get the sword out of you. Let me save your life. <laughs> uh, who knows? Um, I've never seen so much blood before. That's when I fainted. You can't blame me, can you? And when I awoke, Mystic Amy was... Stabbing Mystical Lease through the back. Hmm. This all confirms Miss Von Karma's theory. Von Karma strive for nothing but perfection. Putting together such facts is nothing for me. You should know that, Miles Edgeworth. Perfection is an impossibility, Franziska Von Karma. And I'm here to teach you just that. When I looked across at the scene, the sword was already in place. Hold it! At that time, was the victim bleeding? Well, I was very shocked to be seeing all this, of course, so I'm not entirely sure. But I don't think I saw any blood. Not then. I'm sure that you didn't. The weapon was acting as a plug in the wound. In any case, let's be clear on one very important point. Did you actually see the instant in which the victim was stabbed? Thinking about it now, I didn't actually see her stab Mystic Elise. Hold it! Think carefully. This is very important. It's Iris we're talking about here. I'm thinking for all I'm worth. No. 
When I looked over, the sword was already in Mr. Kalisa's body. Hmm. It might not be conclusive, but... This testimony supports her theory. The victim was stabbed in her room and then dropped into the courtyard. I think this proves it rather well, Miles Edgeworth. Hmm. I've never seen so much blood before. Hold it! So you're saying that you saw the victim's blood? Th that's right. Some of it had splattered onto Iris, too. When the defendant was arrested, she was meditating in her room. And her blood-flecked clothing was neatly folded in the corner. Oh. What? Her clothes were blood-flecked as well? Hmm. That seems quite conclusive to me. What should I do? Press the point further? Yeah. Press further. Going back to your previous statement, you said that you saw little bleeding when the victim was stabbed. But now, you say you saw the victim bleeding. Well, well, I, I say that what I saw is what I saw. Well, what did you see? Maybe I didn't see the poor woman get stabbed, but I saw the girl pull the sword out of her, plain as day. There we go. Mmm. Pulling the sword out. Well, it wasn't exactly pulling. It was more like it came out. Witness, you will add this statement to your testimony. Oh, was that important? More important than you can imagine. I saw the instant in which the blade, plunged into the hilt, was smoothly drawn out. Plunged into the hilt? This thing should be slathered in blood then. Nuh uh. Nuh uh. Hold up. Hold up. Uh uh. Okay, we're gonna just show it right here. No, no reason to g delay it. <laughs> Sister Bikini, you are a reliable witness. At least I like to think so. But there are too many contradictions here. Well, what do you mean? You make it sound as though I'm a liar. But you're a handsome young man, so I'll forgive you. What contradictions are you talking about? In the scene that the witness claims to have seen, the weapon was thrust up to its hilt into the victim. Furthermore, the killer withdrew the weapon smoothly from the body. However, both of these are complete impossibilities. What do you mean? Please explain- ah! Explain yourself! To start with, do you think it would be possible to stab someone to the hilt with this? No matter how I look at the defendant, she doesn't appear strong enough for that. Doesn't appear? What meaningless dribble! I, too, may appear to be weak and frail, but I can crush men under my heel and make them weep, should I so choose. Oof. The objection stands. I wept a little back there, I must admit. Objection! That isn't the, that isn't the only issue here. If this sword was truly stabbed into the body up to the hilt... Well, just look at all the branches on it certainly wouldn't come out smoothly. That, that's... We also have the problem of the amount of bleeding. It's true that when a blade is left in a body, it acts as a plug of sorts. However, when the weapon is shaped like this, it's an entirely different story. The wound would be too large for the blade to completely stop the bleeding. Objection! That's nothing more than conjecture. In reality, the victim was stabbed with a shichishido. Even a weapon of this nature may still sometimes slide out smoothly and may still sometimes stop the blood loss. Objection! I'm not finished. There is still one more conclusive contradiction. 
You've still got more? This one is simple. If the sword really was thrust in all the way to the hilt, why is there only blood on the tip of it? Ah. If this witness is telling the truth, then there should be blood along the entire length of the sword. No! Order, order, wah! Bravo, Miles Edgeworth! Raising this may many contradictions from a single piece of evidence. All the other attorneys I know could maybe manage one, if that. Well, what does this all mean? You have proven contradictions regarding the murder weapon, but... Having come this far, there can only be one answer. And that is... The weapon used to kill the victim was not the Shichishido. Well, I'll be... What? A foolishly foolish idea born from the foolish mind of a foolhardy foolish fool. Let's examine this again. What was it that made us think this sword was a murder weapon? Well... It's because Mystic Amy was holding it. Exactly. However, if you reflect on this, that is the only basis we have to assume such a thing. The impression left by the scene was just too strong. That is what influenced us. It influenced us to believe that the Shichishida was the murder weapon. Order! Order! Ah! So maybe the Shichita was not the murder weapon. Even if that is the case, it changes nothing, Miles Edgeworth. The sister here saw everything. She saw the defendant stab the victim with a sword-like sword, sword -like object. Hmm, that's true. Your response, Mr. Edgeworth? No. No. Bikini said she saw Iris take the blade out. If that is so, I would like the prosecution to answer the obvious question it raises. The obvious... question? Yes. Namely, where did the real murder weapon disappear to? It goes without saying that the police searched the main hall and the surrounding area. Perhaps the prosecution can enlighten us as to what, as to if a sword-like object was found. Th that's answer the question, Miss One Karma. No evidence of that kind was found. Hmm. Another mystery to throw onto the pile. A trial without a murder weapon is a tricky beast. Excuse me, could I say something? I just remembered something, actually. What is it, sister? I was just thinking. It's possible. But just maybe, what actually happened was... It was just over there. What exactly are you going on about here? The murder weapon, I mean. Maybe. I think I might know where the sword was disposed of. You what? Well then, I think we need to hear testimony from you one more time, sister. Impossible. What else? What else could have this old woman have seen? That is the question. Huh. Alright, I think we're actually going to end it right here. Yeah, we're approaching one hour on the dot. I don't want to get into something else here. So... Francisca Von Karma! I know Edgeworth said he had pulled strings, but my god, what a string to pull. I did not expect this at all. I think I was too hung up on the cool idea of Edgeworth and Godot trading snide remarks and comebacks but Franziska oh I missed her oh I missed her 
Oh man. Ah. Uh. It's so good to have Francisca back. I'm sure she's just gonna be here for one day, and the following day will be will be Phoenix versus Godot in the final final trial. But for now, oh man, for now. Hmm. This got to me. Right, so I do find it interesting that the real murder weapon was probably disposed of. Like, I'm thinking it was either thrown in the river or put into the incinerator of or near the inner temple. It's one of those two, I think. Now, um... Gosh, oh, crap, I was about to say something. Damn it, what was I about to say? I was about to say something really interesting about where I was thinking this was going. Uh, oh, oh, right, right, um... So it's clear that whoever the real murderer was, they set up the crime scene while there were no witnesses, while Bikini was unconscious, to set up a very specific appearance. They really wanted the Shichishito to appear to be the murder weapon, and that would frame Iris. Like, I do believe that Iris was like, Oh crap, let me help you, let me get this sword out of you. And that might have just killed Elise by... by unplugging the wound and letting her bleed out. Like, I feel like Iris messed up big time there, if it was really Iris at the scene. Right. So one last thing I want to talk about. In this video, we have talked about Edgeworth enjoying the whip, or at least not having a problem with whips, Francisca stepping on someone, insertions, and tips. I'm just bringing that out there, okay? I'm just putting that out there. Those are the things that we talked about in this episode, okay? I'm just saying, these are things that happened. Think of that as you will. Anyway. I'm Zephyr the Jester. This has been Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney. I thank you for watching, and hopefully I will catch you next time. So until then, please take care. <laughs>